Hello, I hope you're having a great day. So previously I created this video about generating QR codes and barcodes in Ruby on Rails application and actually storing them in active storage and attaching them to products. So I was using a gem bar Barbie to generate barcodes and here's how it worked. I had a list of posts and whenever a post was created, I ran the service uh, in uh, a callback to generate a barcode. So I was using the code 128 encoding type. So I generated a barcode based on the product title for this example case. Then I turned it into a PNG image. I stored this image in the temporary folder and then I uploaded it as a active storage attachment and I attached it finally to the product. So each product had an attached uh, barcode and the barcode was stored in the actual storage. So locally in um, our storage folder and uh, in production at uh, the cloud storage provider of your use case. So for example, S3. Now uh, the question is, do you really want to store an, uh, a programmatically generated image uh, in your server? Why would you load the server with that? Why don't you just uh, uh, render this uh, programmatically generated image on the client side? So to do this, we could use uh, a front-end uh, gem, a JavaScript gem, uh, not gem, but library in the JavaScript world, a JS barcode. So recently I used it and it worked quite nicely for me. Let's try installing it in a new Rails app and see how it works. Now for this example, I'm going to have a new Rails app uh, with a list of products. So uh, I have just created a scaffold of a product with name and barcode. If I go to our seeds, I have added the creation of 50 products and uh, I have a name set. And I also want to generate a barcode. So let's uh, go and uh, uh, generate a barcode for the product after the product is uh, created maybe. So let's say we'll, ha we'll have a callback like after create uh, do uh, update barcode equals secure random dot hex. But this way, each time we create a product, we'll have an additional call to the database. So we have a call to uh, create the product and then a separate call to update the product. So instead of doing this, maybe we can do something like uh, before create, before create do, and we're going to set the attribute uh, of the barcode on the product. I would say self.barcode equals secure random dot hex. So you see the syntax here is quite different for setting an attribute and for actually updating the attribute. Okay, let's see if this actually works. I'm going to run Rails console product dot count zero Rails DB seed. Okay, let's go Rails console product dot all. And you see each product had a set barcode now. So looks quite nice. Let's, let's open our server and have a list of our products. Here we have a name and the barcode for each product. Okay, now let's go to our JavaScript part. So we're going to install the gem, well, actually, package, uh, library, whatever, not gem, <laughs> JS barcode. And how can we do it? So we're going to use stimulus.js and input maps that we have uh, out of the box in a new Rails 7 application. So I'm going to say bin, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, bin slash import map bin and the name of the library would normally be something like JS barcode, but possibly it can be different. So let's just double check and PM uh, JS barcode. And the name, uh, the name equals actual JS barcode, because in some cases there can be uh, not unique names. So there will be some kind of other symbols or not the same name as the name of the library. So uh, I'm going to say bin input map bin uh, JS barcode. And uh, it added this line to our input map.rb. So let's go to input map.rb. It pinches barcode to this URL. So uh, let's now create a stimulus controller. Rails generate stimulus barcode. Okay, let's uh, open our barcode controller and we're going to import this uh, JS barcode. So I'm going to say uh, uh, import JS barcode from JS barcode. So we are importing this uh, kind of function from uh, JS barcode that is defined here that uh, goes to this URL. If we go to this URL, 
we will see this uh, JavaScript code for JS barcode and uh, we see that it's kind of named JS barcode. So uh, that's, I guess, where this name comes from. So we imported JS barcode. Now we can try using it in our stimulus. Let's uh, have a look at the library and how we can use it. So here in the most simple example, I find an element by the uh, ID and uh, yeah, better here, find the element by the ID the barcode is uh, one, two, three, four for this case. And I have some additional options. So I'm going to say uh, uh, within the connect JS barcode, I'm going to have uh, the barcode for one, two, three, four. And instead of uh, barcode, I will say this dot element. And what can an element be? It can be an SVG or canvas or image. So let's go to our product partial and uh, try adding an image. So IMG data controller barcode. Let's uh, go back to our app. And you see now each product has a barcode with the, the text one, two, three, four. So all the barcodes are the same. Let's uh, go and try making the text unique uh, for each product based on its actual barcode. So uh, I will go and uh, say here we'll have this uh, dot element dot data set dot code. And we will say uh, data code equals uh, product barcode. Let's now refresh. And you see the barcodes are actually different and you see we are generating the barcode and the uh, actual text uh, of the barcode uh, underneath. So it looks quite nice. Uh, what if we want to add uh, some uh, additional options? So let's define options. I will say const uh, options. And we'll have options in the end here. And let's see, we can have uh, format. So by default, the format is one to eight. There is another format we can use. It's, uh, I think, 39. Let's uh, compare that to format. So this is the way it looks with format one to eight, uh, format code one to eight. And here is how it looks with code 39. So you see the difference between the encoding is uh, basically that here all the barcodes have more or less the same length, whereas uh, with uh, encoding one to eight, uh, the length is uh, uh, not necessarily the same. So uh, what else can we change? We can change the color, for example, uh, let's say line color. By default, it is uh, black. We can change it to blue, for example. So now it is blue. Then we can try hiding the label, for example, uh, display value. By default, it is true. We can set it to false. So you see now we are not displaying the actual uh, value of the barcode. We can also try changing the uh, width, for example. Let's make it, uh, so I think by default it might be around two. Let's make it 20. You see now it's a lot different. Now in some cases this might be what you need, but uh, most likely not. We can also change the margin of the image that is generated. So let's make it like 100. And you see, I try dragging and there is uh, a big margin from uh, the sides of the image. Let's make it zero. Usually I would make it zero so that the image takes up as little place as uh, possible. And uh, yeah, this is um, basically it. Uh, so uh, in many cases, uh, now I would maybe use uh, this kind of JS library to just uh, render barcodes uh, on the client side instead of uh, uh, generating barcodes on the server side and especially instead of storing them uh, in uh, storage. Why store files that can be programmatically generated really? Okay, anyway, thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.